Um, and so all of you know that, but you don't know the whole story of how I got here and how it all happened. So that's what I want to share tonight. Um, when I was growing up, grew up in a Catholic church, big Catholic family. And my problem with the Catholic church is only that they taught me Jesus is the savior of the world, but they didn't teach me he was a savior of PT. It was never a personal relationship. We didn't read the Bible. We didn't study anything about in it. We had, I should have brought it. I get my mother, our father just passed away this year and I got the family Bible. <laughs> My husband used to say, I'm going to hit somebody upside the head with my Bible. He could have used this one. It's like that thick. I mean, it, it's the biggest Bible I've ever seen. Never, that's sad. I remember my whole childhood, that sitting on our shelf in the family room, never being opened. The truth's right there, and my whole family just never opened it. But I heard, you know, the stories of David and Goliath, Noah and the ark, you know, Daniel being thrown into the lion's den. But it wasn't until I was 26 and became a Christian started learning Sunday school classes and reading the Bible and learning what it was all about. That David went up against Goliath after many of the king's mighty warriors had failed and were killed by him or uh, things like that. He had the faith, though. He knew God was in the battle. He went up against him, this, you know, whatever 12-year-old boy. And also, like Daniel, I didn't know that he was thrown into the lion's den because... He refused to worship the king and stayed faithful to God. So stuff like that that I started learning, but I still question, how did they have that faith? How did they know that God was with them and was going to protect them? How could they go through all those difficult situations? So, and I don't have to go back as far as them, you know, to the Old Testament. My husband, Buzz, we were married in 1983. He was in the Air Force. We were in Tampa. And, um... He got, that's where we both became Christians. That's a whole other story for another night. It was five years he was a Christian before I became a Christian. Almost got divorced. So that's, like I said, that's a whole other story. But um, he got out of the Air Force after six years, um, got on with civilian contractors. They sent him out to Phoenix, Arizona. So we're out there. We got into a big uh, conservative Baptist church learned about Awanas and things like that. We had our kid, three of our kids were in Florida, two of them were out there. But anyway, he, uh, we lived on the northwest side of Phoenix. He worked on the southeast side. And it was an hour commute. If you think of the LA freeways, that's what the Phoenix I-17 is like. It's a parking lot. He transferred or commuted an hour each way in this parking lot, just horrible. Well, eventually we sold our house, moved to the Chandler, Arizona. He was five minutes from work, and he got laid off. Well, the guys at work were saying, aren't you angry? You just bought a house. You have five little kids. You know, what are you going to do? And he's, he told them, and one of the guys told me, he said this, Buzz didn't. He said, he said, people are getting phone calls today that their child was killed in a car wreck. People are getting told they have cancer. I just lost my job and God's gonna give me another one. Five months later, God did, and it was a better job. And we always had food on the table, we had money to pay our bills during that five months. So, but it took us up to Salt Lake City. Well, I always heard, every time we moved, we moved like a dozen times in our marriage. I always heard Buzz telling the kids, if God doesn't want me here, this is the last place I wanna be. He might be taking us there to, to meet one person who he's gonna use us in their life, or he's gonna use them in our life. He told them that every time and one time. I guess, I think it was leaving Phoenix. Patrick must have just studied about Jonah in Sunday school. I heard him telling his little brother, you don't wanna be swallowed by a whale, do you? <laughs> so Buzz's message was getting through. Yeah, we're, we're going. So, but in Salt Lake City, um, out there, we were on a cul-de-sac with seven houses. Most of them were Jack Mormons, not practicing the faith. We took three or four kids every week with us to Awanas. And I mean, just, he used us in so many ways out there. One of the parents of two of the girls, of the father, he became a Christian, got baptized in the church there. And one of, the, of his daughters, now today, she's 26, she's married to a youth pastor and serving in a church. So, I, I mean, I just, I get emotional just thinking about it. 
but from Salt Lake, there were other Mormons that wanted us out of there, <laughs> so it wasn't all pleasant. <laughs> but we ended up getting, we asked his company, we, he actually found a job back in Florida, and we asked his company, they said, what do I do to keep you? And he said, transfer us to Florida, we wanted to get back east, all our families here. So they transferred him back to Florida. We were in Winter Springs, right outside of Orlando. I always say the happiest place on earth, you know, so. But he got promoted to a project manager after the first, before him, two of them got laid off. Well, the general in charge of the project said, if you lay Buzz off, I'm shutting down this program. No reason in the world for them to shut it down. It was a multi-million dollar program paying his measly salary. Not, not that he was getting that much. But they laid him off 15 minutes after he walked in the door getting laid off, his phone rang. A customer in Sterling, Virginia. <laughs> and he said, I'll help you, but I gotta tell you, I just got laid off. And the guy said, would you ever think of moving to Virginia? <laughs> and of course, Buzz is a history buff, so he jumped at the chance. Me and the kids are like, no, no. <laughs> we are in a great church, great friends. We had start, helped the youth minister at that church start an Awanas program. And we had a house with a built-in swimming pool, so we're like, no, we don't want to go to Virginia. Not the wind. We had just left Salt Lake City, you know, three feet of snow all year in your backyard. You know? <laughs> so it, it was just not a good thing. But, you know, again, we knew God had something up here he wanted to bring us up here for. So, of course, we couldn't afford housing by Sterling. Ended up in Frederick County. Literally a week after we moved in, someone across the street, the head of Frederick County, literally, we happened to move across from, told Nathan, hey, sign-ups are this weekend for Little League. Come on, you know, Nathan had a glove out there with him, so he said, yeah, come on up. Well, Buzz goes up to sign up all the kids for Little League. He ends up coaching Nathan's team, sponsored by Winchester Neurological Associates, coaching the team through the summer, spring and summer. He ends up becoming friends with one of the parents on the team and didn't find out till months later that he's a neurosurgeon on the practice that one, a member of the practice that sponsored the team. So you fast forward two years later, 2006, I'm in the emergency room with headaches that won't go away. The, the emergency room doctor says, had any stress lately? I'm like, I homeschool my five kids. I just started a part-time job recently. My mother-in-law was just here for three weeks. <laughs> like, yeah. Nothing unusual. <laughs> so she does a CAT scan and she comes back in. She goes, I got good news and bad news. She goes, the bad news is you got a mass on the right side of your brain the size of an orange. She goes, but the good news is your mother-in-law's off the hook. <laughs> so we laughed. and. She goes, well, the next step's a neurosurgeon. Do you know anybody? And Buzz goes, we're friends with Jim Chaddick. She goes, I'll go call him. He's a good one to know. She leaves the room, and we look at each other and go, well, now we know why God brought us up here to Virginia. He had a reason. What well, was stage four cancer? I had to do six weeks of chemo and radiation, followed by a year of chemo, which they said I wouldn't live that long. I had four months to a year was my prognosis. So I told Buzz, after the six weeks, the average cost of a month of chemo was $22,000. After my insurance, I had to pay between seven and 800. And so I told Buzz, I can't do it. We don't have $700 extra a month. He goes, if God wants you to do it, he'll provide the money. So I did the six weeks, which we put mostly on credit cards, but then he did, God provided. One month, Buzz got a bonus almost to the penny that I needed for chemo that month, and he had never gotten a bonus from this company before, and, and didn't after that either. But my dad, he's I was retired. He sent me about three thousand dollars to cover, you know, four months or so. Somebody at church anonymously donated money to help pay for some of it, and I made it through the year, and you know, I'm, I'm still here today. But I, I know now, I can look back and see God was definitely active in my life all, all throughout it, even before I became a Christian. I see him as active in it. But I, I don't wonder anymore how people like Daniel or David, how they had that faith. I know how they had that faith. They saw God in their life over and over again, and even Buzz. He had, he had seen him over and over. That's how they get that faith. Even before I knew I needed him, he was ahead of me planning things out, obviously, you know, with Dr. Chaddick and coming to Virginia and all that. 
So anyway, that's my hope is for everybody, everybody here. And I, I always ask God every day, give me an opportunity to share what I do or what he's done for me. I work doing loans for Navy Federal on the phone and almost every day he gives me an opportunity. Somebody calling for a loan for medical bills or something. So I believe he's still using me and, and what, I, what he's done for me to share it with other people. So, but that's my hope is that everybody here sees him that active in their life as well. Thank you.